Hi, welcome to Expressions. As you can tell, I'm holding a millipede here, which is a bug. One of many that we're going to be seeing today because we're at the Insectary, OSU Insectary in Stillwater. Mike Doss is with us and he's going to take us on a tour of the Insectary, show us a bunch of different bugs, why they exist on this earth and why we should not be afraid of them. I'm Julie Robbins. Welcome to Expressions and we'll be right back. Okay, great. Okay, Except it's not a bug. Well, oh well. And see, that's what we do here is we try to educate people about what is a bug and what isn't a bug. Okay, take him. <laughs> this is an arthropod and you can tell it's not a bug because oh, okay. bugs have six legs, see? Oh. And three body parts. Is this parts. yellow stuff, is that him pooping? No, it's just an acid that they excrete when they get scared. Oh. And, uh, so millipedes aren't a bug, they are once again. They're an arthropod. They're related to bugs. They have an exoskeleton. They've got jointed legs. But insects, bugs are a type of insect, and insects all have three legs. I mean, six legs, excuse me. <laughs> three body parts. OK. So it's pretty easy to see that this guy's got more than six oh, legs. Yeah. So. the OSU Insectary in Stillwater and joining us today is Mike Doss. Mike, you are a Insector Zoo curator, is that right? I'm the Insect Zoo curator. Yeah, okay, <laughs> that's right. And uh, speaking of insects here, you have one in your hand. Oh, and he, she? This is a female. It's okay. a New Guinea giant spiny stick. And you don't seem uh, afraid at all as I'm standing back here, right? <laughs> no, these are uh, fairly tame actually. They don't bite. They don't sting. This is not a stinger on it. It's an ovipositor that she lays her eggs with. But it goes kind of up like a like a scorpion or something, does it? Sometimes kind of in a way, they do. yeah. Yeah, yeah. They can hold their their tail up, their abdomen, pretty well. Now you seem pretty comfortable with this. What got you involved in bugs? Well, about ten years ago, we began uh, doing some outreach programs, some educational programs with the local schools and some of the 4-H groups in order to um, develop an interest and an awareness of entomology as a science. Right. So we put together a collection of animals in order to do programs to promote our science. And this is what we've ended up with. So it's to educate children, I guess, right? Primarily, yes. Okay. But we educate adults, too. We talk to <laughs> adult <laughs> civic groups, yeah. So, and it's a good thing because as we were talking earlier before we started, I just have this fear, you know, of, of bugs and snakes and that sort of thing. So you said this really helps children and adults, you know, once they get their hands on it and they learn about it too, it really releases that right. fear, right? Well, we try to, to emphasize the fact that most insects are beneficial. Only about 2% are actually harmful in some way as they sting us or bite us or eat our food crops or infest our homes. but. Most of them are actually beneficial, so. So they do have a purpose on this. They earth, have a right? purpose, yes. And what is the purpose of this? What is the purpose yeah. of this? <laughs> well, this is actually a plant pest. The USDA regards this as a plant feeder, so we have to have permits to have exotic insects that are considered pests. So mm -hmm. this is not one of the beneficials. This guy eats leaves on trees and shrubs, so. I'm interested in these, in this little case right here. What, what are these? These are Brazilian cockroaches. Also not a beneficial, but okay. <laughs> they're not a household pest. They, they primarily live in the rainforest, and they'll feed on rotten, decaying fruit. So they, in a way, they kind of are beneficial because they help recycle things that well. need to be turned back into the soil. But they're a very large clear wing cockroach and they're capable of flight. So. And they're okay here even though you said they're primarily in the rainforest. You've well, just we, putting the bark? We don't keep them in a cage like this all the time. We have a large cage with substrate to maintain humidity in the cage and and so we, we set them up like this just for demonstration programs. Kind of like the hissing cockroaches that we have in the in the gerbil cage. They, they do pretty good on a temporary basis like that but we don't 
keep them as a colony. Now hissing cockroach, they actually do hiss? Yeah, if you'll stick your hand in there and oh, touch no. one. No, thank you. Oh, Fine. you can do it. <laughs> I don't know if you could hear it on the camera or not, but, but if you listen. They're from Madagascar, and they live in the rainforest there. And they eat fruit also. They're not a household pest. So this is another type of giant walking stick that we keep. This is a Malaysian jungle nymph. Now these have an attitude, don't they? Well, a lot of them have an attitude. A lot of them will clamp down on your hand if you're not careful. And that's what she's doing when she sticks her leg out. Mm -hmm. she, she would like to, to clamp these spines down on my finger. Oh, if yeah, you can see those spines, like thorns. they're kind of like cactus thorns. Mm -hmm. And if they stick in your skin, it hurts. And they're big enough to draw blood. The natives call this a thorny devil, because if you look at its back, it's just covered with thorns. Oh, right. And if you touch them, they're fairly sharp. You want to touch one? OK. Oh, Ooh, that, yeah, that one's like, good. That one's like, good. <laughs> Thank you. But Ooh, yeah. see, that, see how its legs are spread there? Mm -hmm. It's waiting for somebody to stick their so finger, or an animal, down, you know, right? if an animal stuck its nose down there to see if it would taste good, they'd clamp down on it and it hurts, so. Is this the, uh, as large as they get right here? That's pretty much it, that's an adult. Her abdomen's full of eggs and so that's why oh. it's so round and big. The male looks a lot different. He's skinny oh, and he's got tiny. wings and he's brown, he's not as colorful, but he's got full wings and is capable of flight. So the female can't fly. She's got little short wings, and her body's so massive that she right. couldn't get off the ground anyway. But this is called a walking leaf. Oh, now talk about being camouflaged well. And it is very camouflaged. In fact, I've got a nymph, a little baby over here that most people would never even notice it on the plant. If you look at it, it's the same color as the leaf. And it's right there. I wouldn't have seen it had it not been moving. That's its underside. Its legs are moving right now. but And it'll get about the same size as the adult in this cage. But one interesting thing about them is that as they get older, the edges of their body kind of turn brown, mm. similar to the edges of an old leaf. So it makes for good camouflage. We have a big tarantula collection. And um, these are from Mexico. And they're actually an endangered species now. Really? They're listed on, on the endangered species list. This one actually came to us back in the late 70s. It's one I've had since about 1978 as a pet. But they're really nice tarantulas because they're colorful and they're fairly docile. I've never been bit by by one of this species. Now are all tarantulas, are they poisonous? All spiders, including tarantulas, have venom glands. That's how they eat. They kill their prey by injecting venom into it. So they're all poisonous from that standpoint. Uh, most of them aren't deadly poisonous. In Oklahoma, we have two spiders that are really dangerous. One is the fiddleback. Mm -hmm. okay, I've heard or of that. brown recluse, and the other is the black widow. That's a big female black widow. Boy, it sure is. And, and they are deadly, right? Well, they're not deadly to most people. They'll give you flu-like, real severe flu-like symptoms. Uh, real small children and people that are sick already, real sick or real old, can die from it. But mm. most people like you and I would just feel really bad after yeah. you got bit. And they're not nearly as common around here as the brown recluse, which... What you call the fiddleback? The fiddleback or brown recluse, which is this spider, which you can find probably just about any building, any house in Oklahoma, you can find one of these, which is what makes them so bad. They like to get into places where they're, that are under, undisturbed mostly. Mm -hmm. So you find them when you're not really expecting them. I mean, they cause a big, big uh, necrotic sore on your tissue, so they're pretty nasty little spider, but those are the only two native spiders to Oklahoma that are dangerous. So. What about tarantulas? Would you find, what kind of tarantulas would you find in Oklahoma? Well, we have uh, 
let's see, here's the Oklahoma tarantula we have. We have one type of tarantula in Oklahoma. So, oh, it's small. Some, well, they're, some of them are a little bigger than this. This is a young female. Tarantulas, do they normally like dirt areas, rocks? Where they, would you find them? They like to burrow in the ground. Okay. So they get into yards, they'll be uh, in grassland type habitats, and they'll burrow, the females primarily burrow about 18 inches down into the ground. So sometimes if you see a hole in your yard, mm -hmm. if you watch in the late evening, sometimes you can see their bodies start climbing uh -huh. up out of it. Uh, a couple times of the year, they'll breed. And when they do that, the females produce a pheromone that uh, attracts the males. And then you'll start seeing males crossing the road, getting into your yard. Sometimes they'll come into the garage. And they're looking for the female. And they're looking for the female, that's right. And this is a male. And if you'll notice, their body shape is a lot different. They're skinny. Their abdomen is small. They have long legs. The male tarantula doesn't mate until the end of its life. And so when you see one, He's old, he's got one thing on his mind, and it doesn't include you picking him up. And kids that want to pick one up for a pet or something, they'll find a male because they're out walking around right. and they're not, not a good animal to keep. They're not gonna live very long and they're not real friendly. Okay, Mike, what's next? I see a bunch of, uh, I guess, is that silk in those boxes there? Yeah, these are baboon spiders and they really like producing a lot of silk around their nest, their, their home. It, it forms kind of a sense of security to them. These are from Africa, and they're a quite aggressive spider, oh, really? and they're fairly toxic if they bite. I can really? show you what oh, some, just how aggressive they are? What some tarantulas will do, because some people like to pick tarantulas up, and some people think you can pick any tarantula up, and that's not the case, because some of them don't like to be messed with, and this is one of them. Oh, God. See how it bit? Oh, yeah. It really enjoys biting to the point that sometimes it even drips venom out of its fangs. Wow. Now, you say these are, these are found in Africa? So these are found in Africa. Okay, now this is beautiful right here, but uh, you've told me there's something in there I probably don't want to see, right? Well, there's a... Uh, <laughs> There's a large South American tarantula, it's called Therphosa blondi. And now how does that differ from the other ones we've seen? Well, some people call them dinner plate tarantulas because they're the size yeah. of the dinner plate Ooh. when they're an adult. This is a juvenile that we bought that was captive bred and we've raised it up from about a quarter of an inch size to the size that it is now. And it's still only about a third grown. Well, you know, I don't, I don't see it from here, so it is hidden well. Well, they like a real humid environment, so we put it in this terrarium so that it would help maintain some of the humidity. One of the things this tarantula does as a defense is it kicks abdominal hairs out. They're eutricating hairs, and they'll float through the air, and they get in your skin and in your sinus cavities, and they're very irritating. Well, you know, you were... You kind of messed with him earlier, and now you've been coughing and stuff, so you're thinking you might have some tarantula hairs in your throat, yeah, right? That's a good possibility. Sometimes you, you can see that their abdomen is actually bald. Be oh. see, it's, can you see the hairs right yeah. there, how it flipped those hairs out? And it's bald because see, it does. See, that's what yeah, it's doing right, right there. there is kicking those hairs out, and they're, they're, not, they're not good to breathe, and they're very irritating. So the best thing to do with this guy is just to leave him alone. See, she's still kicking hairs out even inside the terrarium. Mm. When she molts, she'll grow a new set of hairs back there and she'll be all ready to, to flick more hairs out at you. Okay, I recognize this little booger here. That's a scorpion, right? This is an African, South African flat rock scorpion. Are you gonna pick this one up? Ooh. I will if you will. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm not going to. Sometimes they sting, you know, and sometimes they pinch. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a scorpion that is not very toxic. Typically, scorpions that have real skinny tails and big pedipalps aren't very toxic. They're not hot. I see some fine hairs on it. Yes, what? they have a lot of sensory hairs on their body that helps them kind of 
smell out where they're at and feel. So their whole body is covered with hairs. Mm -hmm. Now we bred these here in the lab. We have a pair of them. See, now I can't even get them off my hand. She likes me. Yes, she does. I'd say get off. <laughs> and we have, have a lot of little babies now that are doing real well. This is a little baby flat rock uh -huh. scorpion. This one's about two years old now. About ready for a larger cage. Yeah, really. Now, how long do they live? Well, I'm not real sure, but we've had this adult for about five years, and uh, they seem to be quite long-lived. We have another species from Africa that is the most massive Ooh. scorpion in the world as far as physical girth. These are the emperor scorpions, and they're another one that's fairly docile. They oh, don't, really? no, they don't readily sting. They, they can sting, and I have been stung by them. It's like a mild bee sting. Oh, gosh, look at that stinger, though. And they've got a big, big stinger, big poison gland at the end of it. Yeah. But they've kind of lost their aggressiveness to sting. They don't sting their food when they eat it. When they catch an insect, like a cricket, to eat, they mm -hmm. crush it with their pedipalps. The scorpions that we have here in Oklahoma are much smaller. And for them to kill a cricket, they have to sting it to immobilize it. Oh. So they use their venom and their stinger to eat. Right. These guys crush everything. In fact, I've been stung and pinched by these, and the pinch is actually worse oh, than the sting. Will so. they just not let go? If they don't want to, they yeah, pinch they for a while. And it, it's, it's pretty sharp. They have pretty sharp little points on the ends of them, and it can hurt. Okay, now these are awful tiny. They don't look dangerous at all. Well, these are the Oklahoma scorpion, and they're actually worse than the bigger African ones that we just looked at. So you're gonna pick one up? No, no. <laughs> these things will sting like a bumblebee. Oh. And it hurts bad. And this is what one would find in Oklahoma. Sometimes they even get in houses. Well, oh, I've heard of that, yeah. yeah. They're so flat and so skinny that they can slip under most door jams. And a lot of times when it's really hot out, they'll try to find a cooler place mm -hmm. in the summer. Is this full grown here? Yes. Pretty much. They, some of them get a little bit bigger, but not a whole lot. But they pack a powerful sting. So. Oh, well, and that's what makes them so, so dangerous, I guess, because well, they are small. They're not they dangerous. Be, I mean, they're not, they're they, not going to kill you or put you in the hospital. But, but nobody but wants to hurt. hurt. <laughs> yeah, it's like a bee sting. So unless you're really allergic to venom of a bee sting, you probably wouldn't do more than stomp your feet and say a few things that <laughs> you normally wouldn't say, you know. Right. Okay, what else do we have here? We have some assassin bugs. We have two different types. Well, that just doesn't sound good. Yeah, well, they're called assassin bugs because they're predators and they eat other insects. So they're a beneficial insect. These are wheel bugs, which are, are uh, native to Oklahoma and most of the United States. If I can get the lid off there. Mm. They have piercing and sucking mouth parts, and they're also venomous. So. Oh, really? Yeah. So they produce a little venom Ooh. from that strange looking structure on their head. Mm -hmm. They're called a wheel bug because if you look at their back, it looks like they have a gear. Let me set it down there. Sticking out of their back. Right. Like a wheel. Ooh. These are called white eyed assassin bugs, and they're from Africa. And they're also venomous. They're a venomous predator. Mm. I've been told by some of the zookeepers that I got them from that they can actually spit venom. Oh, goodness. I've never had that happen. <laughs> Let's hope not. Okay, this... These are some non-insect arthropods that are called centipedes. <coughs> oh. Got a little tarantula hair tarantula there? Tarantula hair. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, goodness, yeah. And we have these oh. in Oklahoma. This one's actually from Texas, but it's wow. real, real similar to the one we have in Oklahoma. I didn't realize they move so quickly. They're pretty fast, 
and they're also venomous. As being a predator, they have pretty powerful mouth parts and they can bite pretty good. <coughs> oh. Tarantula's getting to you. Even after the fact. The more you're around them, the more sensitive you become to it. And I've been around them for a long time. So you develop an allergy then by being around you them? You get sensitized to it, yes. Oh. I need to get a drink. Just. Okay. Are you okay now? Oh, I guess. Well, we appreciate you uh, sacrificing <laughs> for us. <laughs> I should know better by now. <laughs> now, what are these huge roly polies here? Is this another oh, form of centipede? Are, no, these are millipedes. Oh, millipedes, okay. There's, there are some roly polies in there with them, but these are millipedes from Africa. They're giant millipedes. Boy, they are. And these are not a predator. These are animals that eat detritus primarily. Look at all the legs. They eat rotten, rotten plants, old fruit. We go to the grocery store about once a week and get old produce like tomatoes and lettuce that they're throwing out mm -hmm. and we feed them that. So they're kind of a recycler. You know, they take things that are rotting and they turn it into humus and fertilizer, so. Okay, what are we coming up on here? Okay, we have some polyphemus cocoons. <coughs> here, I can get these out, too. Mm -hmm. These are a native moth. They're a giant silk moth that... Oh, they got you a see. spider there. Oh, they're everywhere. These are the cocoons right here. Oh. And they form a silk-type cocoon. Primarily, they eat oak leaves. So if you live in an area where there's a lot of oak trees, you might see these. These are, let's see. Oh, how it's, it's beautiful. These are the adults here. And these are actually kind of small. Some of them are probably twice as big as this. And their lifespan's pretty short, isn't it? As an adult, it's a couple of weeks. They have no functional mouth parts. So as an adult, they don't eat, only the larvae feed. So they basically starve themselves to death then, right? Well, so they, they, they reproduce as an adult and that's it. So they'll mate and lay eggs and So die. they've served their purpose. Right, okay. right. We also have some beetles, several different types of beetle species. Uh, these are, what are they? These are carrot beetles, which are native to Oklahoma that we raise here. Sometimes you may see these. They look kind of like a June beetle. Oh, yeah. They I've seen those around my house. Them. Yeah, mm -hmm. we have a colony of these that we're raising. And closely related to that, we have some African cetonids, most of which are uh, in the grub stage right now. The adults are short-lived, and so we don't have... Oh, how pretty. This is, this is one that is alive. That's a flower beetle from Africa. Wow. What do they eat? Just As an adult, they eat fruit. So in the rainforest, they'll eat fruit that rots and falls to the ground. And then they'll lay eggs in compost, primarily leaf litter that's decaying. Mm -hmm. And the grubs actually eat leaf litter. And sometimes they'll eat wood also, similar to the atlas beetle, which is from Asia. Uh, the atlas beetles are, are fruit eaters as adults, and the grubs eat... Oh, uh, good. my goodness. The grubs eat rotten wood, and they make a pretty good hors d'oeuvre, too. Oh. <laughs> oh, gosh. This is not as big as they get. They'll get probably another third larger really? than this before they pupate. Oh, my goodness. Ooh, it's huge. Yes. All right, now this is the section that I love right here at the butterflies. Yes. You have quite a few of them here. Yeah, we have three different species of uh, North American butterflies. We have the Julia, which is the, the orange mm -hmm. butterfly. Mm -hmm. And we have the- Can we uh, open this? Sure, we have the uh, zebra, which is a, the black butterfly with the yellow stripes. And we have the Gulf fritillary, which is the one that's orange with silver spots under its, on the underside of its wings, so. Ooh, yeah, we have them flying out. Is that okay? They're that's okay, over. yeah. Oh, how beautiful. Now, what's this one here? That's again? the Julia. This is the Julia. Mm -hmm. 
And this is a female Julia that's emitting its pheromones. See how it's curling its abdomen up mm -hmm. to attract a male. Oh. So they'll mate, and all three of these butterfly species lay their eggs on Passiflora, which is what this vine is right here. Mm -hmm. And if you look real close, there's eggs up in the terminals of the plant right there that they've laid. Oh. And there's, there's uh, the Julia lays its eggs everywhere. They'll lay it on the screen, they lay it on the leaves like right there, but the zebra is real specific about placing its eggs in the plant terminal. Now which ones did you say that we would see here in Oklahoma? The Gulf fritillary is the one that has the silver spots under its wings and they migrate up here during the summer. Okay. Some people plant passiflora in their backyards and they'll actually go through a couple of generations during the summer here. Now the reason for the orange is that because they're not getting enough food or whatever from the plants is... Right, the oranges that I've placed in the cage are for a nectar source so that they have more to eat because I can't keep enough flowers in a cage this size to feed the population that I have so I supplement it with oranges. And tell me about the, the what is this hanging here? These are chrysalis. These are all butterfly chrysalis. Here's a butterfly that's emerging from its chrysalis right now. Oh, uh, wow. See it in action. Once they lay their eggs on the plant, there's so many larvae on the plant that they'll eat most of the leaves off of it. So at that point, I remove them and I place cuttings of passiflora in the cages next to this and let the larvae feed in there. And once they form a chrysalis, I glue them onto sticks and put them in the cage so when they emerge as an adult, I don't have to transfer them into another cage. They're right in the cage where they need to be. See, there's a, a zebra laying its eggs in the plant terminal right mm, there. Okay, so, yeah. Yeah, this is one of the more enjoyable aspects of, of raising insects or the butterflies. Oh, this is the most enjoyable part for me. Yeah, well, <laughs> just about everybody likes butterflies. You know, when you talk about whether kids like insects or not, a lot of them will just flat out say no, but when you remind them that butterflies are an insect, pretty much everybody likes butterflies. Mm -hmm. so. Well, Mike, thank you so much for showing us the day and the life of a bug. Right? Well, certainly, yes. And different little animals you have here. <laughs> thank you so much. We sure. appreciate you being on our program today. And thank you so much for joining us on Expressions and taking the tour with Mike Doss at the Insectary in Stillwater. Thank you for watching Expressions again. We'll see you next week. Okay, we need to catch these butterflies, don't we? Well, here you go. Oh. <laughs> Get after it. Well, I, how do I do this? What, just up like this? That's well, one way, oh, yeah. Look. Oh, wait, wait, oh, 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 hello, wait. <laughs> there you go, yeah, got two. Got two. Wow. All right, now just like, oh, no, I'm doing see, something wrong. You gotta let them go in the cage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying.